Good morning, man hour. Stretch those arms. Wipe the sleep out of your eyes. It is time to talk some NFL football. It's week three of the NFL preseason. Tomorrow, it starts at Thursday. We're going to talk a little bit about Kenny Pickett. Tremaine Edmonds is back as well. Hit that like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment down below. Let's buckle up. And now, Mike's thoughts. Preseason is a very magical, magical tool. You get to see a lot of things that you may not be able to see from point A to point B or during the offseason or a little bit of this or a little bit of that. And one thing we have been grown to accustomed to this season so far are a lot, that's right, a lot of preseason NFL fights. And this one kind of uh, hits home a little bit. We've seen fights with the Kelsey, with, with Travis Kelsey and his teammates. We've seen the Dallas Cowboys fighting with each other. We've seen uh, Charger, or sorry, uh, Rams versus Raiders. We've been seeing a lot of fights. This one, however, Colts versus Eagles. The Indianapolis Colts versus the Philadelphia Eagles. This little scuffle took a took a took took, took a little bit of turn. 50 yards down the field, to be exact. All pro center. That's right. All pro center. The best center in the game. Jason Kelsey says he's sorry for the cheap shot that he did versus the joint practice versus the Colts yesterday. My man, Jason Kelsey, goes sprinting 50 yards down the field. Not 10, not 15, not 20, but 50. Literally half of the field to cheap shot a Colts linebacker to shove him in the back saying, get up, my boy. First of all, there are aspects of this situation that you could deem, right? There are things that you can see on the positive side. Positive side of things, Jason Kelsey is going to protect his boys at all costs. Positive side, the Eagles are hungry, they're scrappy, and they're going to do some work this season. Positive side, Jason Kelsey is in shape to be able to run 50 yards and be able to whoop some ass though, right? Negative side. Offensive linemen are the dirtiest humans out there. They will crawl, they will scratch you, they will poke you in the eyes, they will grab your titties. They, they will do everything they can to get a leg up on you. And this shows it right here. Now, I'm all for the scuffles and the fights and all that stuff. Like, I think it is a positive thing. I think it's a, it is a good team bonding experience. I think that, you know, as long as it doesn't go overboard, right? As long as it doesn't go way out in left field and helmets start flying and, and whatever, right? I, th- I think it is very good for the team growth process. It is shows that, hey, we are out here working hard, and we're working hard because we're getting a- a- underneath the other team's skin, right? Come, it comes back and forth, yada, yada, yada. But Jason Kelsey, my man, I understand you sprint 50 yards down the field. I understand you, quote, cheap-shotted him, and you regret it. You apologize for it. But you are an offensive lineman at the end of the day, Jason Kelsey. You are the best center in the game, Jason Kelsey. Do not act like you are some squeaky clean son of a gun. Offensive linemen are dirty. They are dirty, man. It it just, since you got your own show now, what is it? Uh, Northern Heights or whatever it is. Just because you got an image to uphold, don't change your ways, my man. We all know linemen are gross. Slow it down, baby. But don't apologize, Jason Kelsey. Like, yeah, I did it. What of it? Step up and do something about it. Stop me next time. We see a fat man running 50 yards down the field. You know it's about to go down. (laughs) Like Like you have to. 
You have to know it, it's about it's about to go down, right? <laughs> but guys, we got a great show for you, Lana today. We're going to talk more about those Eagles and Lions or uh, Colts. Starters are being named. But first, but first, but first, but first, we have to cue that intro. Are you ready for the best damn radio show on the planet? Man, our nation, <laughs> rise up. I would like to personally welcome you to Man Hour at the dark. Say that thing. Why bring you the host, Mike, Buck, get calm. You know they who come to the same. Talk to what you about to hear right here. I second that. Go. You know that that's us when we talk about sports. Giving you facts on the field to the core. Uh, Tune in, we need the support. One hour too short, tell us some more. On all your station, not dropping no music. Starts like Adidas, but Nike just do it. Down four on the fourth, we go for the win. Michael, two seconds, we taking it in. Buck, Mike, and Combs, you know what's going on. Man, now we're out the dark. No LA, we the big spark. No fourth and inches, won't cut short. Got the best talk in this all sports. Buzzing more than buzz beaters. We coming live, all three speaks go. And what is up, Man Hour Nation? Michael Buckhashi here with the Man Hour. Head over to manhour.co. That's C-O, not com, dot C-O. Check out the website. Check out the blog section. Check out the new news that is dropping over there. Of course, check out the merchandise section as well. Support the show any way you can over there. But if you like the show, if you enjoy what we're doing, guys, it costs nothing. Literally costs nothing for you to click the like button right now. So hit that like button and hit that share button because sharing is caring. Bring in the people in there. Talk your stuff. Talk your shit in the comments. We love it. We love it. We love it. We love it. It makes for a great interactive show, and that's exactly what we are. Every Monday through Friday, we are live right here at 10 a.m. East Coast time. And then two days a week, Tuesday and Fridays, we bring you guys the after hours show with my man Hoffy. Oof. What was it? We, we 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 did a test run on Monday night. We got some people jumping in the chat. Got some people jump on air. If you guys want to come on, jump on the air. Talk your stuff. Come on on Tuesday. Come on on Friday. We'll bring you on. We'll let you give the platform. Give your show a shout out. Do whatever you want. Come out there and talk your stuff. But I got to ask the question, guys. I got to ask the question. I am a computer nerd at heart. Love, let's just be honest. I played football and then I became a com- com- computer nerd because I needed a career after football, right? I love pushing the X's and O's. I, I, I love doing with, with the ones and zeros, right? But I had decided to possibly dabble into building an app. And men our pick them app. So what I'm thinking here, guys, what I am possibly thinking is that I build an app, an iOS and an Android app that has weekly pickums on there, right? You simply pick oh, the Chiefs versus Lions. Who who is gonna win? Boom. Bada bing, bada boom. Now, it's gonna be absolutely free to download, absolutely free to pick the games, and the winner will win hundred dollars each week. Straight out of my pocket and into yours. What do you guys think of, think about that? Should I build an app and pick a map for you guys to win $100 each week? Let me know in the comments. I'd be curious. Would you guys support it? Would you guys share it? I mean, obviously, it'd be a lot of fun. We do. We talk NFL all the time here anyway. So why not pick the games and win some dollar dollar bills for free? That's right. For free. But if you guys are new here, like I said, consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. Let us know what is going on. We do have a great show for you lined up today. It is Fact or Crap Wednesday here. We are going to talk about the fact or possibly the crap. And Kenny Pickett, we're, we we got to talk about the second-year man. He is getting all the praises in the world right now. Cardinals, that's right, the Arizona Cardinals. we got to talk about the quarterback situation Baker Mayfield has been named starter. We got to talk a little bit about that. Jalen Kurt, Carter, not Kurt, Carter, the baby rhino. That man is blowing people up over there in Philly. And, of course, Christian Kurt back in the news with his freaking Jaguars wide receiver core talk. We're the best. 
we got to break that down. We got to break the dead dad down. But first, let's get into the lead block of the day. Leading of the way down the field, we got some news here. Panthers running back, Miles Sanders may not play versus the Lions in week three preseason game with the alleged, not alleged, with the growing injury. He, he, he's sore. The manhood is a little sore. But he says, and I quote, I will be ready week one. Don't you worry about that. We got to flex on the fools. Miles Sanders, don't worry about playing week three, man. Just worry about getting healthy. Worry about doing your thing. Worry about getting out there and effing those people up this year. Carolina Panthers are the dark horse, baby. Step up. Chicago Bears linebacker Tremaine Edmonds has returned to practice for the first time since August 4th. It's about time, man. You signed that big deal. You come over from Buffalo. You're supposed to be that game changer for the Bears defense. Get your ass out on the field, man. Come on. They need you. Justin Fields, the MVP himself, can't do it all by himself. Get out there. Let's do it. He's officially back. Lions wide receiver St. Brown will not play Friday with his ankle injury, but he should be ready by week one per head coach Dan Campbell. This is the smartest move that they could possibly do if you're the Detroit Lions Lions fans. Sit out anybody that has any type of nagging injury. If they got a hangnail, you're out. You're not playing Friday. I don't care about this game whatsoever. We know who our starters are. We know who our backups are. Bada bing, bada boom. We need you for the Kansas City Chiefs. We need you for the Kansas City Chiefs. Kansas City Chiefs, man, I have Chris Jones. So, hey, pass that ball all you want. Their pass rush was terrible without Chris Jones. Indianapolis Colts quarterback Anthony Richards will start Thursday versus the Philadelphia Eagles. We have been going back and forth about shoot, who should play in this final preseason game. I think Anthony Richards should play in this final preseason game. He should play the full quarter. Get him some reps under his belt. Get him some hits. Get him some contact, especially with this great Philadelphia Eagles defense. Get him some reps. Saints tight end Jimmy Graham is expected to return back to practice today after experiencing a medical episode on Friday. Guys, this Jimmy Graham story is very eye-raising and concerning to me. He allegedly had a medical episode on Friday and was arrested by police and taken to the hospital and then released Saturday morning. Now, people said he was drunk. I've heard he had a stroke or a seizure or, like, it's, it, we don't know what is going, going, going on, but hopefully Jimmy Jarrett Graham is okay. Hopefully his mental state is like is fine because, you know, there is a lot of stress of the NFL season and he's already breaking down in the preseason. Maybe it is time to hang, hang them up, but all, all well wishes for Jimmy Graham as he is expected back to return to practice today. Seahawks wide receiver Jackson Smith and Enigma had wrist surgery yesterday. With a fractured wrist, he had wrist surgery. He is expected to miss a three to four weeks and should not be ready by week one. Keyword there, should not be ready by week one. We had a Seahawks guy on the after show Monday, Joe, right? Seahawks talk. He says Jackson Smith Nabigba, is how you say, say his name, is that X factor for that team. He is a default number two receiver. He is going to be the guy. He's going to be the one that takes a double team from Tyler Smith and DK. Hopefully they get him back really, really quick here. And the final lead block of the day, Washington Commanders wide receiver Scary Terry McLaurin is day-to-day with a toe sprain. He sprained that toe versus the Ravens on Monday night just the other day. And... Hopefully he does not play in their final preseason game. Hopefully he just hangs it up and like, hey, we got a excuse me, we got a long way to the rocket, a long way to the top if we want to rock and roll. We got the long way to the top if you want to rock and roll. The commander's going to have a long, long season ahead of them. Uh, so hopefully Scary Terry is one hundred percent come week one. Sam Howe is going to need him. Jacoby Brissett is going to need him. Eric Bieniemy is going to need him. Whoever, who, whoever it is, 
is going to need that dude. Going to need that dude. But with all that being said, guys, that is the lead block for the day. If you guys enjoy the lead block, let me know. Um, can I change it up? Make it a little bit more pleasing to the eye, pleasing to the ear? Let me know. I'm always changing things, always looking to grow, always looking to gr do great things here on the Man Hour. And hopefully you are enjoying it. It is Wednesday edition, August 23rd. As we dive into a little bit of fact or crap. Fact or crap is very, very simple. But, of course we got to make things complicated. Of course we got to make things a little bit of head scratching. Of course we got to de to uh, debunk both sides of the story, right? But, fact or crap is very, very simple. We put out a statement and we ask... If it is indeed a fact or if it is a crap. It's simple. Fact or crap. Everything here on the man hour is simple. We're simple-minded people with complex outskirts. Out out we try to be complicated, but let's just be honest. We're, we're simple. We're simple human beings. We're very, very, very simple. And speaking of being simple, Kenny Pickett. Kenny Pickett has nothing but had praise this offseason, people are putting this man up on the pedestal. Second year jump is going to be crazy. He is doing things, right? He has, he has done three drives so far this preseason in two games. He went 9 for 11, 113 yards, two touchdowns, but a QBR 149.1. And Kenny Pickett, being the humble man that he is, Mr. Small Hands, Mr. Two Club Gloves Jr., says, hey, simmer down now. It's just preseason. We have won nothing yet. So fact or crap, should Kenny Pickett embrace the praise? Should should Kenny Pickett embrace what he has been doing this offseason and this preseason and getting ready for week one versus San Francisco 49ers? Like I said, guys, Kenny Pickett has an opportunity to be a very – very good quarterback in this league. He has fell in a very good situation. Mike Tomlin, a very, very good coach. Never had a losing season as his tenure in Pittsburgh. The Pittsburgh Steelers have one of the best defenses in the NFL. They have a pretty good offense as well. So with that being said, Kenny Pickett, I love what you're doing. I love that you are downplaying the hype. I love that you are downplaying the fact like, hey, it is just preseason. But, Kenny Pickett, you have gone 9 for 11 this preseason. You have thrown 413 yards for two touchdowns and a QBR ranking of 149.1. Damn near perfect, my man. But, yes, this is, this is a fact. Kenny Pickett should downplay the praise, but the praise is all warranted. As a nice, humble human being, Kenny Pickett will downplay it. As he should. He hasn't done anything yet in the in the NFL, right? Yes, they had an eight and eight season last year. Well, they're eight, eight and one, right? They haven't gone to the playoffs. They haven't done this. They haven't won the won the North. I get it. But at the same time, Kenny. You are going to be the man in Pittsburgh for a long, long time. You guys have an opportunity to dethrone the Cincinnati Bengals from the top of that division. You guys have the opportunity to make a deep playoff run this season. Buy into the hype, Kenny Pickett, but he won't because he's a very humble human being. Factor crap, should he do it? I mean, he should. But he won't because I, I feel like that is just not who he is. That is not who the Pittsburgh Steelers are. They're just very humble, humble team. They're just happy to be there, right? Work hard every day. Reap, reap the rewards. It is what it is. So we go from a very humble person to the humble side of things to the complete opposite, to the Look at me, look at my flashy bling, 
Me, 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 egotistical MFers, right? Now, Christian Kurt, my man, Jacksonville Jaguars, wide receiver. Christian Kurt has been all over the news for the Jacksonville Jaguars since his trade, right? All offseason. Since they picked up Calvin Ridley this uh, last season, right? And OTAs have been like, we are those guys. We are the best offense in the NFL. Now he's saying that we passed the, we, we had the best receiver core in the NFL. We have potential Hall of Famers right here. Their work ethic is crazy. Their professionalism is perfect. This, this, and this. Christian Kirk is talking up the Jaguars like nobody's business right now. Now, here on the man hour, we have been kind of downplaying the Jaguars a little bit. Trevor Lawrence. Number fourth, 14th ranked quarterback in the league, judged by his peers, not us, by his peers. Other players in the NFL. Jacksonville Jaguars did sneak into the playoffs last year, nine and eight, right? They did beat the Chargers and in the playoffs after being 21 points points down. We get it. We see all the writing on the wall. You guys have potential to be a really, really good team. Doug Pedersen is the guy. Travis Etienne, right? You do have Trevor Lawrence. You do have Calvin Ridley, Zay Jones, and, of course, yourself, Christian Kurt. But to say that you guys have the best receiver core in the NFL, slow it down, baby. Slow it down, baby. Because with that being said, I don't think you guys even have the best core in the AFC. Hell, if we look at the AFC in general, there are two teams that come to the head right off the bat. The Cleveland Browns. They may not have the notoriety as you guys do because they're just out there doing their work. They're out there doing their thing. They're going to shock some people too this season. Watch out. They have Amari Cooper, Peoples Jones. Uh, um, they just re- they, they just restructured their tight end to make some to to to, to make some more roster moves. Watch out! The Browns are going to be good. Cincinnati Bengals, Tyler Boyd, Jamar Chase. Come on, hell! I might even take the Green Bay Packers receiver core over the Jacksonville Jaguars. So when we sit down and we look at it, we look at this wide receiver core. Yes, they do have a very talented wide receiver core. Calvin Ridley should make some noise this season. He's going to have that chip on his shoulder. He missed all of last season because of the whole gambling thing. He is going to be hungry. He's going to be a 100%. But it might take him a little while to knock that rust off. A few games. Zay J, J Jones has a opportunity to look or be very, very, very good. He has that opportunity, but he is not there yet. Has not proved a thing yet. Kristen Kirk, you are the ringleader. You are supposed to be the guy. You weren't even a top 10 receiver last year. When we think of top 10 receivers, Christian Kirk does not come to my mind. Not at all. I'll take Michael Pittman Jr. over you right now in your own division. So factor crap, the Jacksonville Jaguars had the best receiver core in the NFL. Crap. (laughs) I, I think it's pretty cut and dry. It is crap. They might be number five or number six, but not the best. Slow it down, baby. Christian Kurt, earn your stripes before you talk. Starts talking that shit. Let's have a 10-win season first. Can we do that? 11 wins? Can we definitively de facto win the division without having to play in week 18? I don't know. It is what it is. Guys, let me know. Do you think the Jacksonville Jaguars have a legit opportunity to make some noise in the AFC? When I say make some noise, I'm talking about not just one playoff win, but two playoff wins. Can they make it to the AFC championship chip, chip, chip game? Can they run away from the AFC South, a very, very wide open AFC South I might have? Titans are taking a step back. The Colts, you don't know what they're going to be without Jonathan Taylor, even if he's there or not. Houston Houston Texans could shock some people. You never know. This is the Jaguars division to lose, and they have to run away with it for, for, for me to even have confidence in them.
like a lot. Like, I know my man Patrick's all over there rolling his eyes right now. Like, oh, Jaguars are my team. Let's go, baby. But hey, slow it down. Prove to me first. Prove to me that you are not a one-hit wonder. Prove to me that you are not a five-minute man. <laughs> if you know, you know. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Let's move out to the west. The NFC side west of things and the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona Cardinals head coach Jonathan Gannon says he does not have a quarterback picked yet for QB1. When it is time to name one, he said, I quote, I will name one. But but right now, it is really up in the air. So right now, the quarterback competition but in Arizona is between a 37-year-old Colt McCoy and a rookie Clayton Toon. In two games, Colt McCoy has had 24 snaps for 9 for 12 for 42 yards. In two games, Clayton Toon has gone 25 for 47 for 268 yards for a touchdown in a NIT. The biggest difference between these two guys is Clayton Toon is mobile and Colt McCoy is not. Colt McCoy is an old man, an old redhead that just wants to throw, sling the rock around, around, around the field. So fact or crap, Clayton Toon will be the starter for the Arizona Cardinals come week one. So when we think about the Arizona Cardinals, there is a new regime in town. Jonathan Gannon wants to put his way in there. He wants to, you know, hey, this is my team, my way. And how do you start that? You start by the you you start at the top. Kyler Murray tore his ACU, what, December 12th, right? Only only been out eight months. He probably not if the Arizona Cardinals are are smart, they're not gonna play him at all this season. They're they're going to see what they have in their rookie quarterback. They're going to see what they have on this roster. They're going to see if they could possibly figure something out. Because let's just be honest, the Arizona Cardinals are in complete rebuild mode. There is no retooling. There is no reshuffling around. It is we have blown stuff up and we are rebuilding. And right now you're rebuilding through the quarterback situation without having to cut your guy. Now, I do like me some Colt McCoy. I have been a Colt McCoy fan since he was at Texas. I do like Colt McCoy. Last year, I thought Colt McCoy performed better than Kyler Murray on the Arizona Cardinals. But that was last year. Colt McCoy this year has kind of really not looked too impressive. Now, it is preseason. Do what you want. The man's 37 years old with a bunch of young guys' eyes out there. But let's just be honest. The Arizona Cardinals line sucks. Probably the worst offensive line in all of the NFL. Now, Colt McCoy might be a better quarterback than Clayton Toon. Colt McCoy might have a leg up on Clayton Toon on all aspects, right? And clearly right now, Colt McCoy, to me, judging by the snaps, judging by the stats, is the starter. Colt, Colt McCoy in two games has 24 snaps. In two games, Clayton Toon has 47 pass attempts. He's doubled his, it just it, you know, pass attempts to snaps, right? It, it just, so clearly... That tells me that Colt McCoy is the starter. But if the Cardinals are smart, if the Cardinals are truly sold that they are rebuilding, if the Cardinals are solely sold that this year is a complete wash, we want to literally find out what we have in this rookie to see if we can move on from Kyler, Clayton Toon will start. Clayton Toon will be the guy. Now, it's not because Colt McCoy is not better. Clayton Toon is a mobile quarterback. Offensive line sucks. Let's try to keep our guy upright as long as we can. If Colt McCoy starts, he'll probably be out by week by week three. Because that line is just terrible. Now, 
I think after this year, Colt, Colt McCoy is probably done. I think he has one year left on the on his contract with the Arizona Cardinals, so he's probably going to ride off in, into the sunset, hopefully retire. Maybe he'll sign with the Chiefs as like a backup guy, you know, to Patrick Mahomes, but we'll see that moving forward. Clayton Toon could possibly be the future in Arizona because of the new regime in town, like I said. So, yes, I do think it is a fact that Clayton Toon will start come week one. I think Clayton Toon is the guy in Arizona moving forward. I think Clayton Toon is there to push Kyler Murray either to be better, because right now he sucks. Kyler Murray is a bottom-tier quarterback in the NFL right now. Let's just be honest. Clayton Toon is there to push Kyler Murray to be better or to push him out. Which one is it? We'll figure it out. Speaking of Joe, Joe, I just talked about your guy. Jason Smith and the Migba is out three to four weeks of that wrist surgery. He says, go Hawks. Go Hawks. He thinks crap. He thinks Colt McCoy is going to be the starter. Huh. I'm not so sure, man. I think Colt McCoy, like I said, I think it's going to be Clayton Toon. Speaking of starters, last yeah, or yesterday on the man hour, I was saying Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you have to figure out your starter by August 23rd. You have to do this. You have to do this, this, and this. There is no more wishy-washy BS, right? Figure out your guy. Put him as a starter. And as soon as I push stop stream, a notification come across my phone saying that the Bucs have named Baker Mayfield starter for week one. Congratulations. Tampa Bay Buccaneers, you guys are out there listening. You guys are doing your thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. But with that being said, fact or crap, Baker Mayfield will lead the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to a division championship. So as soon as the show was over, I went to Facebook, I went to Instagram, Twitter, and I posted that Baker Mayfield is the starter. And people in the chat or in the comments were instantly were saying, oh, he's going to be out by week five. He's terrible. The Bucs are going to be 5-12 and 12 without him. They're going to be this, this, and this, and this. And I'm sitting back thinking, I'm like, man, this hate for Baker Mayfield is real. This hate for a true student of the game, the true game changer that he is, the true dog that he is, there's so much hate for the man. So much hate for Baker Mayfield. Now, I do like some Kyle Trash. I do like the fact that, you know, he had an opportunity to sit behind Tom Brady. I did think that he had the most upside coming out of his draft because, you know, he was like the fifth rated fifth rated quarterback coming out of his draft per our man Tory Anderson and, and like Wyatt. And he was going to fall to a good situation. I have an opportunity to sit, opportunity to learn. I think Kyle Trash can still have a very positive NFL career. But Baker Mayfield is that guy. Baker Mayfield led the Browns to the playoffs. Despite everything that was happening in Cleveland, despite Odell Beckham Jr. calling him out, saying, I'm wide open all the time. Well, his dad. Sorry, his dad called him out. Despite having a torn labrum and a rotator cuff and whatever else he had, he led the Browns to the playoffs. Then got traded to Carolina. Did not get a fair shake in in Carolina. The Panthers were all in tank mode, right? The Panthers were all like, we want to get a first-round draft pick. Baker, you're doing too good. You are looking too good out there. Get out of town. Send him to L.A. Wins a game in L.A. in four days. Now he's in Buccaneer land. With the South, that is literally wide open. You can say... The Falcons are going to win the South with a 9-8 and eight record, and, and I, I, I I cannot argue just like with that. You can say the Saints are, are going to win. I'm like, you know what? You, you, you might be right. The Panthers might win. Literally, the South is wide, is wide open. But will Baker Mayfield lead the Bucs to a division championship? As much as I want to say fact on this situation – I want to say fact. I want to jump on the Baker Mayfield bandwagon. For whatever reason, my gut is telling me the Atlanta Falcons 
are going to do some work this season. My gut is telling me that the Carolina Panthers are going to do some work this season. My gut is telling me that the Bucks and Saints are going to be the bottom feeders of that division this season, no matter who the quarterback is. Now, I understand the people. Literally, it's wide open. You can tell me that the Saints are going to go to the Super Bowl. I'm like, oh, oh, okay, sure, whatever, right? But I'm going to have to go, go with crap. I'm going to have to go with crap because of the simple fact that Russell Gage went down for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I think Russell Gage injury is more hurtful for the Bucs than what we're seeing right now. Yes, they still have Mike Evans. Yes, they still have Godwin. Yes, they have um, Keyshawn Vaughn, right? Yes, they still have Rashad White, uh, Jensen. They still have a fairly good defense. They still have all the core together. But that number three receiver, that X-factor receiver, Justin Gage, is going to hurt them. Todd Boyles, as a coach, is going to hurt them. Baker Mayfield will, will, will not be the down, downfall of the Bucks. It's just they're going to be a victim of uh, circumstations or however you say a word, right? So I'm going to go with, go with crap. I don't think the Bucks are going to win the division this year. That hurts me to say because I love me some Baker Mayfield. Damn it, I love me some Baker May Mayfield. Why why can't they be like in the ASC South with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers? Like then they would roll over everybody. The Titans, Colts, Texans, whoever. They would roll over everybody. Crap, says Joe Stevens from Seattle Seahawks Talk. Says I kind of like the Falcons run game. I do like the Atlanta Falcons run game. I like what the Atlanta Falcons have done building that team back up. I like that they got a uh, uh, Marcus Mariota out of town. I like the fact that they are going in with a uh, oh what's his name Desmond Ritter. I do like a little bit of Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Scotty Miller. Let's not forget they have Whiteside as well, J JJ Whiteside. And that defense. Who was the guy that just came off of uh, injury reserve from, from him at the at that at the defensive end? Uh Clay is Campbell, right? The Falcons are gonna do some work. The Falcons will do some work, I like I feel. Kyle Reed is in the chat. He says, how do you feel about the NFC North? Because I'm hearing the Lions are making a push to win it, but I'm saying the vision belongs to the Vikings. So, Kyle Reed, if you have not joined us on a live before, welcome to the show. Be sure to hit that like button and subscribe button because we're live every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. East Coast time, and we're doing the after show every Tuesday and Friday at 10 p.m. But I will talk about the NFC North for you, my man. I will tell you how overrated the Detroit Lions are. I will tell you that I think the Minnesota Vikings will take a step back this season. I will tell you that the Chicago Bears are still bottom feeders of that league. You, are you catching the drift here? Are you catching what I'm picking up, what I'm putting down, my man? The Green Bay Packers are the cream of the crop in the NFC North. I love me some Jordan Love. I love me their receiver core. I love me the veteran offensive line and the veteran backfield. What makes a team click in the NFL? You can have a subpar running back. You can have an average quarterback. But if you have an elite offensive line, that makes them all better. Now, I am not saying that the Green Bay Packers are an elite offensive line. Do not get those words twisted. Do not put them in a clip and say, this is what Buck said. He said the Green Bay Packers have an elite line. No, they do not. But they do have the best line in the NFC North. They are better team than everybody in the NFC North. Now, the Minnesota Vikings, this is a team that could be Really, really good or really, really, really bad, right? I do like the addition of wide receiver Jordan Addison, right? 
I do like what they did in the draft. Uh, by drafting a, a, their receiver, by replacing Adam Thielen, and then going on the defensive side of the ball. I do like what they did. They still have J.J. They still have K, K.J. Osborne. They picked up uh, uh, T.J. Hawkinson right a couple years ago. They have an opportunity to be really, really good. It all weighs on the shoulders of Kirk Cousins at the end of the day. Actually, I take that back. Kirk Cousins is going to do Kirk Cousins things. Kirk Cousins is going to put up those put up those those numbers. He is going to put them in positions to win. He is going to be there, but it all falls on the shoulders of the defense and coaching staff at the end of the day. Their defense is probably one of the biggest wild cards in the NFL. Yes, they do have Daniel Hunter. They have um White Boy number 22, Harrison Smith. Uh, they they do have some pieces in there on the defensive side of the ball. I just don't have faith in it. They are, they are going to rely a lot on rookies, a lot of second-year players on the defensive side of the ball, and I think they might be exposed this season. So I think the NFC North belongs to the Green Bay Packers right now. I think it is their division to lose with the Detroit Lions being runners-up with like about 10, 10 wins, Vikings coming in third with like eight or nine nine wins, and and then the Bears bringing up with six wins. That is what I had uh, post draft. We will be breaking down again next week to dive deeper into that. But right now, I have to go back of what I put out there all, all like already. Packers with twelve wins, but but I do like the Detroit Lions making some postseason noise. NFC Championship game versus Dallas Cowboys. Knocking off the Eagles in the first round? Don't shoot the messenger. (laughs) Moving on. Moving on. Moving on. Speaking of those Philadelphia Eagles, Jalen Carter, their rookie, has uh, impressed the veterans at Eagles camp. They've been calling him the baby rhino. He was the ninth overall pick. So, fact or crap, Jalen Carter fell into the best situation possible for him, and he will win Defensive Rookie of the Year. So, when we look at Jalen Carter, back in January, all pre-draft thing, he was out there street racing. He They got in a wreck. Somebody got killed, and he fled the scene or whatever, right? Things were all trying to pile up against him. Things were said to be like, hey, maybe this guy has character issues, yada, yada, yada. And me and Brandon, my man Beastie Combs, sat right here on the show saying the best situation. Hell, we're on draft night and up in Chicago with uh, Fitz and Combs and myself. We sat there live on the air saying the best fit for Jalen Carter would be a Philadelphia Eagles team. Get the veterans around him. Get out all the noise. Get in there and get to work and work your ass off. And that's exactly what has happened. Jalen Carter could not have fell into a better situation. Because of the simple fact of this. The Philadelphia Eagles do have one of the best defenses in the NFL. They do have that veteran leadership with Fletcher Cox. With uh, Josh Sweat. With Slay with Reddick, with Williams, with Brandon Graham. I think there could not have been a better situation for Jalen Carter right now because he does, the Eagles do not need him to be the starter. They want him, but they don't need him. And being needed and wanted are two different things, right? If a team needs you, They let you slide with a few things. They let you show up late to practice. They let you put, you know, eye black on your left eye when you're only supposed to put it on your right eye. They let the little things slide, right? Jalen Carter needed a tight little screw. They need to tighten him up, get him in line. Bada bing, bada boom. That's exactly what has happened. Because the uh, Eagles want Jalen Carter, they don't need him. They want him. They're not letting the little things slide. Those veterans out there, Slay, Cox, Brandon Graham, Josh Sweat, they're keeping him in line. 
they're keeping all that outside noise away. They're keeping him in line and keeping him focused. That is why it is a complete fact. Jalen Carter will win Defensive Player of the Year. Jalen Carter will be Rookie of the Year. Jalen Carter will have a great NFL career because of the situation that he fell in. Could not be a better situation for a young man that has had off-the-field issues. Danny Hawker's in the chat, jumped in the chat at the very end of the show. Here's his great morning. I see you on my Steelers. Yes, we did talk about Kenny Pickett. We talked about that man being so humble. If you missed it, Danny, tune back into the clips here. Uh, I'll probably post a clip. I'll probably post that clip around six o'clock. Check it out. Get on your boy. Anthony Price is in the chat. He said it might be Jalen Carter, defense rookie of the year, and, and, and Robertson, offensive rookie of the year. So let's talk about Robertson a little bit. The Atlanta Falcons running back, what, it was eighth overall pick, 10th tenth, tenth overall pick? He might have the most upside of any running back in the game right now. With that being said, if the Falcons use him correctly and do not use him and abuse him, ride him hard and put him away wet, he can definitely have a great career. 10, 11, 12-year career. However, we have seen it with Christian McCaffrey, with Zeke. You can even say uh, DeAndre Swift a little bit, right? When you have a good rookie, drafted him in the first round, so you have him for five years minimum, then you can franchise him tax wise. So you have him seven years on a rookie contract technically. You can use him and abuse him. Now, I do like him as a running back. I do. However, running back is really not a featured position in the game. There are other receivers out there. Let's go to my man, uh, Joe's Seahawks. Jackson Smith Nabigba. This man is going to explode. That man's going to be rookie of the year. Offense rookie uh, of the year. Don't sleep on that. But I do like your comment there. If if Robertson gets 1,400 yards, definitely in consideration. I'm late. Got up late this morning. Man, don't be sorry, dog. Listen, there are times when I hit this news button seven times. I have a two-year-old on this shoulder. Sorry, a three-year-old now. Shit, man, I'm getting old. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old on either arm. And I'm like, the alarm just going off. I'm like, man, life is just too perfect right, right now. Why would I want to ruin this opportunity of the snuggles? But sometimes you got to do what you got to do. So don't be sorry, man, because I post it out on podcast form. We get the clips. You can always watch the replay. Check it out, Danny. You know what we do here, but we says the NFL Talk Live, raw, uncut, every Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. East Coast time. Jay Flowers or Jordan Addison can have a great... Is, is Anthony, is this the most exciting rookie cast class that we've had in a while? Because there are probably legitimately seven guys that could win the uh, uh, rookie of the year. The Lions running back. I, for, I, for, I forget his name. We have Jay Flowers, Addison, uh, Jackson Smith, Robertson. There are a lot of guys out there that can definitely win the rookie block of the year. But next week, next week, I feel I feel like we got to uh, put the money where the mouth is. We have to get out there and name our defensive rookie of the year. Name our offensive rookie of the year. Name the MVP. Break it down. All of that coming next week, guys. So mark your calendars. Next week is going to be huge for the man hour. But tune in tomorrow, 10 a.m. East Coast time. Same time, same place. Love you guys. Have a great day. See you tomorrow. We out.